What's up guys, Carl here. We've got a bit of a simpler set today. We had to move around a ton of stuff just to snag the thumbnail, but this is a very quick video on the brand new 24 inch iMac and it's kind of my review. I've used it for the last week and if it's worth it, or I guess a versus battle against the older 27 inch iMac, is it worth the upgrade? Is it worth getting or could you still buy this? Because as of now, you can still grab this off of the Apple store. For the 24 inch, it starts at 1299 bucks, but you only have access to four of the colors. And we know that the coloring scheme of these iMacs is what all the hype is around. And you can only get the silver, the blue, the green, as well as the pink, if you wanna ball out and get the orange one, which I personally think is my favorite. Obviously orange is the addiction here. You have to start at the mid tier. And from there you have access to all seven colors. And that is for $1,499, $1,500. And that mid-tier spec is the recommended one to most of you guys out there, not just because you get access to this cool orange color, but it does come with an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, of course the M1 chip. Ports wise, you also get double. You'll get the two USB 4 ports as well as the two USB 3 ports and with a computer that only has those four simple ones, you wanna have four as opposed to none. Whereas on the 27 inch, you still get more of the options. You still get the SD card slot. You'll still get classic USB-A, whereas if you're on the 24 inch iMac, a lot of people will live the dongle life. And because of this unique color, no matter which one you get, most dongles won't color match this specifically. I have yet to find an orange dongle. If you guys know of one, let me know and I'll snag it immediately, but most of them are just the standard white, black. Some of them are aluminum or even space gray to match some of the older iMacs. So if color matching is your thing, there might be a problem, Maybe that's why you might grab the silver 24 inch. And PS, if you can afford to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs, definitely check off that box because nothing is accessible in the back and you can't upgrade that after the fact. Over to the 27 inch. So this starts at 1799. You can go a bit crazy with some of the specs all the way up to a 10 core i9, 128 gigs of RAM, which is definitely overkill, up to two terabytes of storage. And this will run you around that $8,000 mark, which is actually what this spec is. Not that that's recommended, but you can kind of see how you can get a bit silly with some of the specs. So before we get into, I guess, the big design changes, just gotta give a huge shout out to WeVPN for sponsoring this episode. So obviously I'm pretty sure we all know what a VPN is, but I just want to share the one that I personally use. So WeVPN gives you all of the premium features that you'd need. It's one of the fastest and most secure and you'll have access to over 50 server locations and you can use it to unlock streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, BBC, etc. They're already offering their services for two bucks and 69 cents a month and you get an additional two months for free. And if you actually use my link and promo code, you'll get an additional amount off. So I think that's a no brainer. It's cheap, affordable, and definitely worth checking out. Okay, let's start off with the thing that we can kind of see first, which are the design changes, because this is the first major design refresh to an iMac. I wanna say in close to six, seven, eight years. This older iMac unibody design has kind of been around forever. It's pretty iconic. You've got the large black bezels. A lot of the rumors were kind of speaking to thinner bezels, still keeping the aluminum. We of course got something very different with the colorways. And that's something that is super subjective. Initially, when I saw the keynote, I saw the orange color and you know, I absolutely fell in love and I do enjoy the color on the back of this iMac. I think it's bold, I think it's super dope. I think this is the color that we all envisioned or wanted, but when you turn it around, that doesn't continue to the front. And sadly, we don't get the same boldness of that color. You can actually see here on this chin, this almost looks pastel-y, salmon. I think my girlfriend said it looks like a nude color, so maybe a makeup choice of hers, which is fine. Maybe it doesn't detract your eyes from the screen, but I know it's just not my taste particularly. The second thing about the design, even though we have slimmed down the bezels, they chose to have a white bezel. And I honestly haven't seen a white bezel on a display in the longest time, maybe even on a smartphone other than the older iPhone 5s. I think there was a Samsung Galaxy S6 that had a white front. Personally, once again, I'm not a big fan of that. The chin is still a bit large, and I personally would have rather seen the overall form factor be increased by maybe two extra centimeters and have all of that chin space move to the back of the computer. That's more important for me. I'd rather have a full display on the front. 
kind of putting looks and color options aside, it is razor thin. It is so much thinner than, I guess, the oblique or, I guess, curve back of the older iMac. For whatever reason, there is still no option to raise or lower the display like we see over on the Pro Display XDR, which I think is the route that Apple should have took. We can only get around 15, maybe 20 degrees of tiltability. So if you wanna have this a bit higher, personally myself, I need it higher all the time, I need to use a desk riser. Just having something simple like this, you can even stack it on books if you want. Just something to get it a bit higher off the desk makes it a bit more natural for me. I'll leave my favorites linked down below. This one's from Ergon Fee. I've got one from Grovemade as well. Or if you wanna save a bit of money because you've just dropped two grand on a new iMac, you can stack it on some paper books or even a stack of paper. Whatever works. One new cool design change though on the 24 inch is the new magnetic power cord. And yes, the cable is braided and yes, it color matches specifically to your iMac. So of course, orange, orange cable, salmon. And if you give this a good enough yank, the power cord will detach. And of course you can just simply slide that back in, reattach it, press the power button and we get some power. That's pretty dope. Further to the color matching, that applies to the accessories as well. So we have a very similar keyboard. So it's got the same ones found on the older 27 slash 21 and a half inch. One new little addition though is Touch ID, depending on if you spec that keyboard. So that's a nice little touch, pun intended there. I find it's a lot more seamless now to unlock your computer and something cool that Apple mentioned, if you have multiple users, they just need to simply use Touch ID and that will log in automatically to their profile, sadly. It's just me and Link here in the studio and this does yet work with a dog paw. The last accessory that I kind of snagged with it solely just to get the color option is the Magic Mouse. So yes, it has the same salmon back. All of the color matching is the same, but it is still the same shitty design. I still can't get over who approved this. Yeah, it looks dope on your desk, but it is so unergonomic. It feels so weird to use. It's too low to the table. I find that my fingers are always dragging on it. Once again, the number one accessory that I would recommend, just like I've made over on my 27 inch, just get the Logitech MX Master 3. The best mouse, it's kind of like a one and done. You just get it, never need to worry about it again. The next big thing to kind of compare are the displays. So yes, there's a bit of a sizing difference here. So I think this new 24 inch iMac will replace the 21 and a half inch. And I think sometime down the road, we might see a 32 inch iMac to replace the 27 inch. This is a four and a half K retina display and it peaks at 500 nits of brightness. But one feature that they didn't transfer over is the matte texture glass. And I can kind of show you if I tilt this kind of off camera here, you can see the reflection of this screen. But if I do the same for the 27 inch, you don't get any of that reflection. I've got a huge window over this side and we get none of that. And I truly wish we saw the matte texture option come to the 24 inch. The glossy finish looks nice, it's more vibrant, but uh, I'm just kind of the person that prefers a matte finish, just kind of eliminating all glare in general. Once again, personal preference, it would be nice to have the option to pick. And maybe the final thing and the most important probably is the overall performance. And this is kind of a mixed bag for me because it just showcases how good the M1 architecture is over on the new Mac lines. We've seen that with the initial MacBook Air, MacBook Pro from last year. So that same chip is now found in the 24 inch iMac. So even with this spec, which is around $2,500, it crushes my fully specced $7,000 plus 27 inch iMac. And I am using Final Cut Pro. Over on Premiere, performance is a bit more similar, but the M1 still tops that. And you can see on benchmark scores, the M1 just crushes everything. I think it's been the biggest improvement to the Mac line in probably close to a decade. Not to bash anyone that dropped a lot of money on their iMac last year, but if you are kind of comparing on which to get currently, if you're looking at solely performance wise and longevity wise, the 24 inch iMac, easily, hands down, it wins that kind of debate. There's kind of no other reason not to grab the 24 inch. If you don't love the overall design, yes, just grab the standard silver one. If you really hate the white bezels, I'm sure you could wrap a D-brand skin around it. My prediction, we will see on the iMac 
Pro, whenever that comes out, we'll have a black bezel. They'll reserve that for the Pro line. But yeah, that's kind of been my overall thoughts on the 24 inch iMac. You kind of already know which one to grab, but I'm not completely in love with this. You know, I know that design and color options are very subjective, but even the front, this chin is now made out of plastic. I wish the same aluminum wrapped around the outside. It doesn't have the same sleekness or professionalism that the older iMac has. Sadly for me anyways, all of my desk setups have the back of my iMac facing against a wall, is that a sign that I need to create something new where I have a floating desk somewhere? But I think most people are in a similar boat. I get that some retail shops, some store options or storefronts will have an iMac as the point of sale or the reception area, and you can see the back. You can see the nice bold color, but for most normal people that use their computers at home, I sadly think the orange will be facing the wall. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling on now. If I missed anything on the 27 inch, let me know down below in the comments. I wish we had the matte glass option on the 24 inch, and I wish we did not have a salmon magic mouse slash keyboard anymore. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.